Alright, hello everyone and welcome back to Shizukisa Gardens. Um, in this episode, I'm going to be building a fairly large exhibit, one of the largest that I've built so far, if not the largest actually. And because I had this rather large space here in the corner here and I wasn't sure what I wanted to do with it. Uh, so I was looking around through the different downloads that I have, different animals I have, until I found something that I think um, would be pretty cool. So yeah, basically what I'm doing is this is going to be a large open area. Well, not really open, uh, it's full of trees, but <laughs> a large area with a elevated path going through. Um, and once I knew I was going to do that, I tried to decide what animal I actually wanted to use. So I played around with a few different ones. I was pretty confident I wanted to do some type of antelope or deer. Um, so ultimately I settled on um, some muntjac deer. Um, if you don't know what those are, they're like um, an omnivorous deer from Asia and India and all that. So. Uh, I put a couple different species of them in here, which you'll see once I actually get to that point uh, in the video. But right now I'm just sorting out the um, the elevated path to make it look the way I want it to. So um, yeah, that's about it with that. Um, I forego doing the post there instead, just you know build it up with walls instead, which looks better. I think it makes more sense. And then I just put posts all the way around. Um, yeah, so here I'm actually decorating the exhibit for the uh, Munch Jack themselves. That's kind of a weird word to say. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen these deer, but you should check them out if you haven't. They actually are omnivores. They will um, eat meat. They'll, you know, kill and eat small animals. Uh, and they have, like, fangs, which is kind of crazy. <laughs> um, but yeah, they're pretty cool. Again. I like them. Um, and I'm using a very similar foilage to what I've used in the other exhibits in this area, so um, you'll see that it's pretty obvious. But yeah, it's not a real complex exhibit, but I like the way it turned out, especially with the elevated path going through. The actual view you get when you're walking through it looks really good, as you'll see at the end of this video. Um, after I do this exhibit, uh, I think I'm going to start moving on to the things that I know I want to do, but I've been sort of putting off, like the Bengal tiger, um, the giant panda, the clouded leopard. Uh, I think I was going to do Jav and Rhino as well. I think those are going to be like the four big animals. Cloud leopards aren't that big, I guess, but, but those four will be, I think, the next ones that I'll do. Uh, if I said I'd do anything else and I don't, that I don't remember, let me know in the comments and I'll be sure to fit that in. Because even after I put those four, I should still have room um, for a few more exhibits after that, if they're small. So, yeah, but we're getting close. I think we're about two thirds. Um, once uh, after I finished this exhibit, I think I was looked and I was about two thirds finished with the zoo, as far as the space we have. So, yeah, looking pretty good. Um, uh, the panda exhibit is obviously going to be sort of the uh, highlight of the zoo, and then the Bengal tiger exhibit is going to be pretty awesome as well. I kind of have a few ideas for those. Um, I don't really have any ideas for how to do the clouded leopard exhibit, but I'll just look at some real world examples and see what I can come up with there. Um, yeah, so should be good. Should be good for sure. Um, not totally sure how much room I'll have past those, but I should have room for at least a couple more small exhibits, because I still have some room over by the cobras and the uh, mongoose that I didn't use, so basically some room behind the mongoose exhibit, which I probably could put like one or two um, small exhibits, probably two small exhibits back there. Um, yeah, so that'll be good. And here, I'm, here you go, here's the actual tour part of the video, and you'll see that uh, it's a pretty good view from up in the elevated path. Uh, I'm pretty pleased with the way it turned out. I don't know if I, I don't know if I love these particular railings, but they sort of match the theme that I've been using for the zoo already. So I went with them just because of that. So were I to do more of a total realism zoo, I wouldn't use them though. I'd use something else. But I haven't really done it. Like, try to be a totally re do a totally realistic zoo since I did um, 
was it Crystal Springs Wildlife Park? That was the last like really realistic zoo I tried to do. Um, I might try to do something like that in the future again. I have so many ideas. You've given me, I've given me so many suggestions for zoos to do in the future. So, um, but obviously right now I can't start anything new because I've already got probably too many series going on as it is. Although there's a few that are coming close to being finished. So. Uh, once those are done, I'll probably, I probably won't start a new one, like, right as soon as one finishes. I'll probably finish one, uh, and then just work on the ones I have left, and then I'll get it down to, like, two or three. And then maybe start another one from there. I don't want to have, like, a ton going on like I did, like I do right now anymore. It's just kind of too much, and it always ends up one or two are getting pushed back. And not getting as much attention as the others, so... I feel like I sound, I sound like I'm talking about my children or something. <laughs> anyway, uh, you see I'm doing the, uh, or uh, you can see from the, uh, the view from the elevated path, and then in a second here I should go down and actually give you guys a better view uh, from inside the exhibit as well. Uh, but like I said, I'm pretty pleased with it. Um, it's not particularly complicated or particularly um, imaginative necessarily it's just an elevated path running through a big open area with a bunch of trees along the sides and that's kind of all it is and I'd used pretty much just all the same foliage and rock combinations that I'd already been using in the zoo just so there's some you know element of you know being unified you know uni so it looks like it's all the same I don't even know how, what I'm trying to say there but yeah but wait wait, wait it all um, sort of blends together um, yeah, but I think this is pretty much the end of the recording if I remember correctly, so once again, thank you very much for watching guys, um, like helps me out a lot, subscribe if you aren't already and you want to see a lot more Zoo Tycoon 2 content, because there is a lot on my channel, and yeah, that's pretty much going to do it, so thanks for watching, and I'm going to see you all in the next one.